So as a more technical aside, let's analyze more carefully the problem of release of viral, viral load from a drop by process of diffusion. So here again, I sketch a droplet, which would typically be an aerosol droplet in the size range of, let's say, microns. And the virion of interest has a size that is much smaller than that on the order of, uh, let's say, 100 nanometers. And this white path is showing uh, how such a virion would go from its initial position R, uh, let's say as a, as a radial position, to this, the boundary. Now, the general problem of when finding the expected first passage time from a point inside a domain to a boundary uh, is a classical problem in the theory of stochastic processes and random walks. And it has the following representation. So the mean or expected first passage time from a point to an absorbing surface uh, solves the following problem. It's the Laplacian of that time, where the minus sign is 1 over d, where d is the diffusivity. And so this is the dv that I described before, the diffusivity of the virion. And the boundary condition for this equation is that uh, it's an absorbing boundary, basically. So when the virion gets to the surface, it's gone. And that's when sort of the, <coughs> the, 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 the stochastic process finishes. So it's tau, tau equals 0 on uh, radius uh, capital R, which is the radius of the droplet. So that's on the boundary. So in the case of a spherical drop, then we can write this equation in uh, cylindrical in spherical coordinates. So that's minus 1 over r squared, uh, r derivative of r squared d tau dr, and that's equal to 1 over capital D. And then again, our boundary condition is that tau of capital R is equal to 0. Another boundary condition we might mention is that d tau uh, dr at r equals 0 is zero. That's a symmetry boundary condition. So when you're right in the middle, basically there should be no ch there's there's no sort of favored direction uh, for for the for the for the diffusion process, and so therefore the derivative of this time with respect to r must be zero at the center. That's a symmetry boundary condition. Okay, so we can now go ahead and solve this problem. Uh, let me put the r square on their side and use primes to denote derivatives. Uh, so let's write this as r squared tau prime prime equals uh, minus r squared over d. And if I now uh, integrate both sides, I get r squared tau prime equals, um, and then here we get a minus r cubed over 3d plus a constant. And that constant integration, according to the symmetry boundary condition, has to be 0, because tau prime is 0 at r equals 0. So we can simplify this and write tau prime is minus r over 3d. And so then I can integrate again. And I found that tau of r is, well, I integrate this. I get r squared over 2 is the integral of r. So that gives, that gives me an r squared over 6. So there'll be a 6d and minus r squared. And there'll be a constant of integration. And to, in order to satisfy this boundary condition of vanishing at capital R, you can see that I can write the constant this way. I write it as capital R squared over 6d is a constant of integration. So basically, the profile of the mean uh, first passage time is essentially a parabola. Uh, so as a function of distance r from the center of the droplet, you have this kind of a shape to the mean transmission time. And the maximum here, maximum value, is uh, tau 0 is the maximum value. And that is r squared over 6d. So that's if you happen to be unlucky and right in the middle, that's sort of the longest you would expect to take from a particular uh, part. Now on the other hand, as I've sketched here, in a typical droplet, if the virions are randomly distributed, some of them, like this guy over here, uh, happen to be very close to the surface. So you're not going to have to wait this long for them to escape. So now we can ask the question, what is the average escape time over all the initial positions of the virus, or virion, assuming that the virions are uniformly distributed at random uh, in the initial condition? So if we do that, 
then we're solving for the, uh, uh, so I'll plug this up right over here. The average um, escape time or first passage time for the virus um, will be uh, tau bar. Well, what I'll do is I'll integrate over all the positions and then divide by the volume because it's a uniform distribution. So I'll write the integral over the volume as uh, 4 pi, the solid angle, times integral from 0 to capital R of tau of R, R squared dr. And I'll divide by the total volume, 4 thirds pi, uh, capital R, R cubed. Okay. So uh, if we do this integral here, so we plug in, plug in this, first of all, we can see uh, that we get... Um, obviously, for the constant term, r squared over 6d, we just have a ratio of volume over volume, which is 1. So we get r squared over 6d is the first term, just integrating that constant. But then it's 1 minus. And then instead of r squared, you, have, you would have r squared times this r squared. says so r to the fourth. So you integrate that, you get r to the fifth over 5. And so then you get 1 fifth over this 1 third here. And that gives you 3 fifths. And so that gives, when I subtract 1 minus 3 fifths, I get 2 fifths. And 2 over 6 is 1 third. And so this ends up being r squared over 15 d, um, as uh, we had previously quoted. So it's worth going through the calculation just to see this number 15 is an order of magnitude. It's larger than 10. So while we normally estimate diffusion times to be of order length squared divided by d, so r squared over d, uh, this calculation shows that the actual average time is much smaller than that by a factor of 15, and that's precisely because the virus virions sometimes find themselves initially near the surface, so they get out more easily. So you don't have to wait for diffusion across the entire drop. That sets the overall scale, but the average drop diffusion uh, time is actually less than that.